your boy Ice Cube woke. This video is brought to you by TatumReport.com. TatumReport.com, get the link in the description section. Make sure you go on and visit TatumReport.com. 100% verifiable news, 100% free to you. Like and subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell so you get notifications. Anytime I go live, I'll make a video. Make sure you still subscribe to my channel. Like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Let's get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, I gotta talk about Ice Cube. In the world of celebrity news, a storm is brewing. Recently, Oprah Winfrey's reaction to Shannon Sharp's testimony in the ongoing Diddy trial has sent shockwaves through social media. What led to Oprah's explosive response? Let's dive into the details. I gotta talk about Ice Cube. Here's another example of how the leftists will turn on you. They will eat you. They will destroy you if you don't agree with them. Even your boy Ice Cube. And Ice Cube hasn't always been no Trump supporter, no concern, he just said some stuff that made me feel like I want to block the boy. But now he comes out because, let me tell you what Ice Cube did for some of y'all don't know. This is how all this stuff started and y'all need to know this. He had a plan. Shannon Sharp, known for his candid takes, stepped into the courtroom and delivered a statement that many are calling shocking. Oprah, who has always been a vocal supporter of social issues, couldn't hold back her feelings. As her face lit up during the proceedings, it was clear this trial is more than just legal drama. It's a reflection of deeper societal issues. He put the plan out there. He, according to his Twitter, the Republican Party, the Democratic Party both came to him like what, like how you wanna do this? How can we help you implement this? He said the Democratic Party told him, Q, wait till after the election and we'll do something for you. The Republican Party said, we'll interject your ideas into the platinum plan that Donald Trump has already started. When Sharp spoke about the impact of celebrity actions on the community, Oprah was visibly moved. This trial has turned into a platform for broader conversations about accountability and influence in the entertainment industry. Many viewers were surprised to see Oprah, typically composed, react with such intensity. Let's talk about it. Let's let's debate. And and you know, I've been shut Wait, out. that sounds like right-wing extremism and <laughs> what about ism what, what but i've been shut out you know some some platforms will not have me on why um they don't like that i'm you know an independent thinker i'm not part of the herd i'm not part of uh the go along to get along gang as the trial unfolds, Shannon Sharp stands firm in his stance, explaining why he chose to speak out during such a high-profile case. He articulates that avoiding conversation isn't an option and that it's crucial to engage in discussions, even when opinions differ. Sharp describes feeling marginalized by platforms that refuse to include him due to his independent views. So to speak. So, um, you know, I'm an outsider. And so, you know, I'm not part of the club. So I have to, I have to go places for, for one that I'm welcome yeah. and where I can voice my opinion without somebody, um, you know, saying I'm a bad person and that they never want to have me on their platform again. What what platforms have have banned you? I've been, I've been. Um, Sharp recounts an eye-opening moment when he was excluded from appearing on The View. He suggests that some hosts were uncomfortable with his perspective, which raises questions about the barriers faced by outspoken individuals in the media landscape. His experiences have led him to seek out forums where he can express himself freely, away from judgment. You know, I tried to go on, I tried to go on The View. They didn't have me on The View. Why? Um, well, a few of the guests just really didn't like where I was coming from. So, uh, or a few of the hosts, I mean. So that's what I was told by the producers. You know, I don't know if the producers was just copping out and using some of the hosts to to not have me come on and explain myself, but. You'd be a good booking for them. I've been on there before. The conversation takes a surprising turn, as Sharp mentions being overlooked by Oprah herself. He reflects on how he thought his journey from South Central to success would resonate with her audience, questioning why he's been left out of opportunities to share his story on such a revered platform. Yeah. You know, it's just when I've became an independent thinker 
when I've, you know, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't follow their, uh, their brand of politics, I guess. But if you can't think for yourself, then you're not really free, are you? No, you're not. You're not. But I've been excluded. I've been excluded on Oprah, you know. I, I, on Oprah? On Oprah, yeah, I've been excluded. As they discuss Oprah's seemingly untouchable status, Sharp highlights how criticizing her can feel more controversial than attacking political figures. This peculiar dichotomy raises eyebrows and prompts viewers to reconsider how celebrity culture influences public discourse, especially when it comes to discussing icons like Oprah. Yeah, man. Um... I would think you'd be the person Oprah would want to promote. I mean, you grew up in South Central, you were successful at a young age, you have dignity, you say what you think. Like, I thought that was the goal. Me too. You know, I don't know what it is, but, you know, several of my, you know, I had a movie called Barbershop, you know. Yeah, um, I remember. That, that I wasn't invited to participate with the cast. I uh, produced a show called uh, Black White, in a candid moment, Sharp addresses the challenges of navigating relationships in politics, hinting at his willingness to engage with leaders across the spectrum. He emphasizes the importance of dialogue, arguing that conversations are essential for resolution. This stance showcases his commitment to fostering understanding, despite the backlash he may face. Uh, and it was it was a very controversial show. And um once again, they had the whole cast on, but I wasn't invited. And so I don't know. I don't on Oprah, know what that's, on Oprah's yeah, show. Yeah, so I don't know what that's really But Oprah is obviously a saintly, godlike figure who's revered by all decent people. Why would she exclude you? I really don't know. You know, that's, that's something that I would love to find out. As the trial continues and tensions rise, one thing is clear, the intersection of celebrity, politics and media remains as complex as ever. With Oprah and Shannon Sharp at the center of this unfolding drama, audiences are left eager for more insight into their lives and the broader implications of their narratives. You are very good at seeming angry. I don't know if you are angry in general, <laughs> but in, in the movies in 21 and 22 yeah. Jump Street, you're disgusted with... I mean, Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum? Wouldn't they piss you off? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it would be fun if I gave you... I give you some lines. Now, these are not lines that... You, you, you would not classify these lines as your typical, like, kind of angry guy lines. In a courtroom drama that's captivated audiences, Shannon Sharp's explosive testimony in the Diddy trial has left everyone buzzing. And now, the question on everyone's mind, how will Oprah Winfrey respond? Let's dive into the details of this unfolding saga. In fact, they're quite the opposite of that. Okay. And I'll read them to you, and if you act them back to me, in your own inimitable way, okay? Okay. You want to do that? Here we go. All right, say these as, as angrily as you can. Lavender body wash makes my pores tingle. <laughs> Lavender body wash make my pores tingle. As the trial progresses, Sharp lays bare allegations that have everyone talking. He passionately argues that the truth behind Diddy's actions runs deeper than anyone realizes. His assertion challenges the very fabric of celebrity culture, igniting a fiery debate that's captured Oprah's attention. There's nothing better on a gloomy day than a good book, a warm blanket, and a creamy pumpkin bisque. <laughs> Man, it's nothing better on a gloomy day than a warm, what was a, blanket. a good blanket, a warm, bl uh, man, give me some damn pumpkin brisk. Sharp emphasizes the necessity of open dialogue, insisting that tackling difficult topics is essential for progress. His words challenge the audience to rethink the role of influential figures like Oprah in shaping public discourse, especially during critical moments like this trial. Diddy. You're hearing Diddy everywhere. Okay. Yeah. So did you ever have any kind of run-in with Diddy? Did you ever do anything with Diddy? Any projects you worked yeah, up with him? Yeah, he produced a few records or had his uh, producers do a few records on my um, War and Peace album, the Peace Disc. 
Yeah. How how was he to work with? It was cool. You know, he uh you know gave us great music. We uh, In a stunning turn of events, Shannon Sharp's testimony in the Diddy trial has sent shockwaves through Hollywood, drawing in none other than Oprah Winfrey. The stakes are high and reactions are explosive. What did Sharp reveal that has everyone talking? Flew out to New York and uh, I was mainly in, in, the, in the studio with the producer. You know, he had a stable of producers, so I was in the studio with his stable of producers and uh, I think we did some great music. Um, and you know, I really, you know, really, uh, kind of, you know, lost contact with him and, and, and really stopped. As the trial unfolds, Sharp shares his past experiences with Diddy, recalling their collaborations. He reflects on the music they created, but hints at a falling out, revealing he distanced himself from Diddy in the mid-90s. His insight into the complexities of their relationship raises eyebrows about the pressures of the entertainment industry. You know, Shook said, you can say what you want about Diddy, but Diddy didn't learn to like young boys. He learned it from a man named Clive Davis. He threw Clive Davis in there. You, you, it doesn't sound like you're part of that camp. You're part of the camp that you think he's being targeted. You know, I don't, I don't know enough to even be able to, to um, be specific on any of this stuff. It's just all speculation. As the trial continues, the tension builds. Sharp's testimony forces everyone to reconsider their perceptions of Diddy. Oprah's reaction is not just about her opinions, it reflects a broader conversation about accountability and the ethics within the entertainment industry. Listen, this is what happened. I say, yo, Big, somebody gonna try to come kill us tonight. What caused you to flip on him? Well, you would say flip on him, but I would say let people know what's happening and the truth behind them. Do you think Diddy was uh, an FBI informant? Puff was seeing a federal agent in D.C. Wow, that's way before he becomes somebody. In a courtroom spectacle that's captivated millions, Shannon Sharp's bold testimony during the Diddy trial has ignited intense discussions. With Oprah Winfrey's dramatic reaction stirring the pot, viewers are left wondering how will this alter the landscape of celebrity culture? Let's unpack the highlights. He's doing some lot of things in D.C., and I think it was possibly because there was an incident when some people died. Puff don't listen. You know, I'm still having nightmares about those nine kids that died at City College. I went to therapy. You'll never get over stuff like that. As the trial unfolds, Shannon Sharp delves deep into the allegations surrounding Diddy, claiming there's more to the story than meets the eye. He articulates how these revelations challenge the very core of celebrity influence, capturing Oprah's attention and sparking a national conversation about accountability. Way before he was famous in the streets of New York and all of a sudden you and your crew jump him literally to join a gang. You see him go from being a guy putting the parties and then all of a sudden gets bigger and bigger and bigger, then you start seeing him really become a star, then a superstar, and you're there from 1990 to 97, and then you're in the car, you're driving Biggie and Biggie gets shot, you're there to see what takes place, and you're speaking to him when you're going to the hospital and you have the conversation with him. Sharp reflects on his past encounters with major media figures, including Oprah, revealing a sense of exclusion that resonates with many. He questions why some voices are elevated while others are overlooked, prompting a re-evaluation of how narratives are shaped in the media world. That's Gene Deal. Uh, some of the stories he told today was very interesting. If you've ever seen a movie American Gangster, there's Frank Lucas, there's Nicky Barnes. Stories about Diddy's father, Melvin Combs, being tied to working with Nicky Barnes, and he was a hustler, and some of the very interesting story he breaks down. And then his conversation with 50 Cent, something that 50 Cent told him, as well as speaking to Biggie's mom and how Biggie's mom feels about Diddy. Anyways, a lot of stories got heated at a point, he got upset at a point, and you'll see him getting very energized and emotional. In a surprising twist, Sharp shares that despite his significant contributions to entertainment, he's never had the chance to appear on Oprah's iconic stage. This shocking revelation raises eyebrows about the dynamics of fame and the barriers that exist within the industry. But if you're somebody that follows 
the story of what's going on with Diddy, you're going to hear it from a very different perspective than the man who spent hundreds of hours with him behind closed doors and asked Gene Deal. Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Yeah. Value came in, giving values contagious, this world of As tensions rise, Sharp's remarks suggest that criticizing Oprah can be more controversial than challenging political figures. He emphasizes the complexity of her influence, encouraging a dialogue about how celebrity culture impacts public discourse, especially regarding prominent figures like her. Okay, so just a few hours ago, a story came out here from Daily Mail talking about the fact that Diddy is named 77 times in Tupac Shakur's murder documents after gangster Dwayne Keith D. Davis accused him of paying a million dollars for the hit. So today we have Diddy's former bodyguard here with us, Gene Deal. With the trial in full swing, the implications of Sharp's testimony are profound. Oprah's response is not just about her perspective, it reflects broader societal questions about the responsibilities of celebrities and their roles in shaping narratives within the entertainment industry. Why wouldn't you take the vax? Um, you, you had a direct order to take it, you were told to take it. Yeah, I, I'm not real good with direct orders. But on a whole nother note, <laughs> uh, Ice Cube is shaking up the gatekeepers just by making appearances with Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, Piers Morgan. He's having an impact. He's normalizing a behavior of hey, let me go sit down and talk with anyone and reject the programming that I can only talk with who corporate media, the Democratic Party, Democratic politicians, and social media tell me I can talk with. Ice Cube addresses the question, why wouldn't you take the direct order? He responds defiantly, I'm not one for direct orders. He's been appearing on shows with Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, and Piers Morgan, shaking up norms in the entertainment world. Ice Cube's choices are unsettling to those who believe musicians should align only with specific media and political voices. But he stands firm, I'll talk to anyone I choose challenging the limits that social and political agendas try to impose on public figures. 